Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is a Unify Pro Aggregation Switch. I've been testing this for roughly two months right now, and so far, no problems at all. Works quite well. It's relatively quiet. I did take it apart, because we're going to talk about what's inside and uh, what all comes in the box. So far, though, no real issues at 25 gig, no problems switching at 25 gig between devices. I was actually using this for the last couple of months for some of the storage testing and some of those videos I've released in the past. Uh, if anyone was paying attention, those devices happen to be connected at 25 gig through this device and uplinked at 10 gig to several other devices. And nothing I threw at it really gave it any trouble. Matter of fact, even doing that never really raised the temperature to the point where it got loud. The four fans in the back that it has are relatively quiet. They're standard fans with standard little connectors, nothing too special about them, but I didn't run into any issues. Before we dive into the details of this review, first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire for a project, such as network consulting, there's a hire button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, saying products and services and affiliate links, you'll find none for Unify. This is something I purchased myself. This was not provided by Unify at all or any affiliation with them. We're also not a Unify reseller. So if you're looking to buy it, head over to the Unify website. And with that, let's start right here on the Unify store page. The SKU for it is the USW Pro Aggregation, and it is currently listed for $8.99 here in the US, and it is listed as in stock. That's important because here in 2021, we've had plenty of supply chain issues. So as of September 2021, it's in stock, and that's the price. They have all the other details in here that it's got the 28 10 gig SFP Plus ports, the four 25 gig SFP 28 ports and also offers support for the USP RPS DC input. We'll get to that in a second. The other thing that's important to know, there's no management interface on this. It does require the Unify software defined networking trolley software, which you can download for free and host yourself. You will need version 6.125 and later. Now on to the couple quick questions. One of them is, layer three routing that's in the name and title of switch the unify switch this particular one does support layer three routing but it's very rudimentary and basic i've actually covered it before and i'll leave a link to it in a video over here on to this part right here the redundant power system i've reviewed this before and i don't think it's a great product uh the problem is kind of well let's just explain it with only one power supply being in here and obviously there's a concern and we haven't really had any Unify switches that have had power supply problems, but still that is something that goes bad just in general, a lot of switches. And Unify's solution was not to put two power supplies, the traditional method, which is used by many switches, but to use this connector on the edge here for connecting it to the external basically another rack mounted power supply that could power multiple switches at once. A lot of the new Unify stuff supports this. The fatal flaw with it, and to my knowledge, this has not been changed since I did my review of that device, is if the power supply goes out in this particular device, the redundant power supply system kicks in and takes over and will let it run. Until you power cycle this, if this has a bad power supply or any switch on that has a bad power supply, the Unify redundant power system does not power it up. It only maintains power if a power supply fails. Kind of a weird failure mode. And also from a cabling standpoint, the cabling that connects these is really bulky and awkward to try to get it tied up to the switches. I don't know. I didn't think it was the greatest idea. Um, it's way easier and more common, of course, just to put dual power supplies in. Alternative options, because not everything in this price range is going to have dual power supply. That's actually, when you start talking about the other enterprise level switches, they are substantially more expensive, especially when they come with like a hot spot power supply. You can just buy two of these. And that's really anytime something, and as this was designed to be a very core central part of your network, or maybe you have all the uplinks from your other switches around the network, uh, it's probably worth it just to have two of these because power supply is one factor, but there can be other factors where, hey, it's electronic, things go wrong, firmware updates go bad. So I would probably recommend having another one in stock. An important detail I wanted to highlight back here on their page is the four SFP28 ports don't support mixed speed at 25 gig mode. Once you set these ports to 25 gig, these four on the end, they all have to be 25 gig or they can all be set to 10, but you can't mix and match 10 and 25 and one. The other ports, it's fine. They will negotiate between 10 gig and one gig, but these ones all have to be set to 25 if you want any of them to work at 25. And I'm glad they have it right here. Uh, it's just hopefully saves somebody some troubleshooting 
issues if they were running into that problem of wanting to use one of the ports on the end with the 25 gig are for an uplink at 10 gig. It won't work unless all of them are at 10 gig. Like I said, just important little don't want to overlook it detail. Now on to what comes in the box. You get the cool little Unify. I don't want to dump them out here, but a couple four rack nut cage nuts and four screws to mount them. You get some screws for the rack ears. You get the rack ears, of course. You get a 10 gig cable. Not a 25 gig cable. I was a little disappointed, but at least I have one here. It is a, a 10 gig SFP DAC Genuine Ubiquity here, and it works perfectly fine uh, at 10 gig. Just, why didn't they put a SFP 28 cable in it? It would have been nice, but at least we do have the rack ears, the mounting, and if you don't want to put it on the rack, they do give you the little rubber feet things. That's what the little black thing is here, so you can put feet on the bottom of it and avoid scratching it up like I've already done by sliding it around. I kind of gouged it. Yeah, this side has a little gouge in it there. Um, probably should have put some feet on it because while it's in testing, I did not have the rack ears on it because it's one more thing to take off to get the lid off and that noise is because yes the lid itself is all metal this is a metal design um, it comes apart relatively easy but not too complicated one thing i really like though is the power cord it's one of those fabric wrapped power cords i don't know they feel a little nicer a little bit more premium but the cool feature is if you're wondering yes it's a normal power connector a common one but it also has this feature so if we put it in and then we flip the little lever don't try this at home, kids. Um, I've done this now in two videos where I've hung things by their power cords. I like things that make it harder to pull out the power cord uh, accidentally. So that's a nice feature that comes on some of the newer Unify switches, this one included. All right, now on to the software. All right, we're running Unify controller version 6.2.26. I run this on my own stack and my own system. So this is uh, at my office and hosted actually Debian, if you care what the back end is. This is not on one of their cloud keys, but it should work fine if you are using one of the cloud keys. Now let's look at the devices and we'll filter for Pro. I actually have two of them on here, one adopted and one not. We're gonna go ahead and uh, do the upgrade and adoption. And this is typical. They don't always ship them with the absolute latest firmware. I usually do the update of firmware prior to adoption. While we're waiting for this, I will mention that this does have the on-screen display on the front of here that will tell you the IP address. This is on the same network as the controller, so it sees it and is able to adopt it. I don't have to type in any IP addresses here. Also, as far as sound goes, these actually are relatively quiet. Uh, this is with both of them running. That's all the DVs we're getting out of it. So relatively quiet. Uh, I'm actually gonna say they're quieter than the other one right here. The US 16XG, which I reviewed before, I was actually shocked at just how quiet these are compared to even that. So they're a yeah, relatively quiet device. I'll leave a link uh, to the review I did of the 16XG. All right, while we're waiting for that one to finish updating and then adopting, let's talk about the one we already have adopted and I've been doing all the testing with. Interesting is when you're looking at the cables plugged into it. This one has one of those QSFP Tech RJ45 to 10 gig adapters. It does work with those and it works with the DAC cables. The interesting part is when you plug the cables into here, like the 25 gig ports, which does not tell me what's even plugged in. Uh, the bottom one here is actually plugged in via fiber, uh, an FS.com adapter, and this is an FS.com DAC cable. I'll leave links to those if you're interested uh, in those particular cables, but it does not know which ones are plugged in. And it's not a problem with the FS.com cables. It's whatever you plug in to the SFP28 ports. It doesn't seem to label them. I don't know if this is something that can be fixed in firmware later, but it's something of note. The ones I've tested with so far, none of them have actually displayed anything as far as the functional, like if it's a DAC, if it's a fiber, but it does right here. It gives me all the information, gives me the input, output, current, voltage, compliance of what it is, and it does the same for the DAC. Yeah, you can see for each one of these, it even gets a serial number and part numbers, but nothing when it's plugged into the 25 gig. Kind of interesting. And I know someone always wants me to run this test, and it's easy enough to do. This is a the Super Micro server I have and a Dell server that I have. I'm just going to run an iPerf test. They're just on the same network adjacent to each other, and it's now running through. So it's going from 3.228 to 3.232. And yes, it does work at the full 25 gig a second. I didn't have any issues uh, setting it up, getting it to work 
uh, nothing special I was doing to get the speed out of there. I mean, 23.3, it's just a little bit off. I can probably do some tuning. This is all done without setting jumbo frames or anything else. This is just standard default settings, no special options done, no problem getting the speed out of it. And each one of the devices I connected, I have a few things connected. As I said, I used them for some of my storage videos, no issues at all. Now the other one has now finished its firmware update. We'll go ahead and adopt it into our network. And it's as simple as that to get these added, just like any other Unify switch, as far as that goes, nothing special. Now, one last thing to talk about is this right here. I think it did not have this feature when it first came out. Someone had commented it was only able to do six when you were setting this up for actually aggregating the ports together, but now it supports more than that. So it starts with that port and can go all the way, for example, from three to port 17. So we could create a really large aggregate group on here. A few people have commented and it was a discussion I've seen in some forums. I believe it was not actually my forums where someone had said you could only do six, but a firmware update later updated that. The firmware as of now that's available in September of 20. 21 allows us to take and we can start for example at port three go ahead and edit this one drag it over here profile overrides aggregate and uh go all the way up to port 18 if you want so you can do a lot more ports now than you could before now you can also and we'll cancel this real quick you can if you want go over to these ports here and do the same thing actually uncheck this box Go down to the bottom and profile overrides aggregate and you can be between 30 and 32 so you can aggregate these ports together as well so you could bond all four 25 gig ports to get a hundred gigs if you needed it so a couple extra options you do have in there um, and i like that it also has that reminder i brought up that was in the documentation of sfp 28 ports don't support mixed speeds at 25 gig mode, uh, but they do support aggregating them together. I didn't really test this because I don't, I mean, I could connect it, I guess, to the other switch with all the ports, um, but I wouldn't be able to put enough bandwidth. I don't have enough devices here to shove enough bandwidth between all of them to make it happen. Um, but either way, it should work perfectly fine. I don't really see a reason why not, but it, look at the specs to see what its maximum switching capacity is. Final thoughts on the product. If you like the Unify ecosystem and the Unify controller platform, as we do, specifically in relation to we like the switches, we like the access points, we do not like the routers, we do not like any of the routing, UDM Pro, USG, USG Pro, insert whatever the new one that may be coming out. Uh, we're not big on any of those, but as far as their switching goes, we find them to be quite reliable, relatively reasonably priced. They're not the absolute cheapest thing you can find, but I think they do a pretty good job. We've got these deployed in quite a few places. Not many of these specific pro aggregation switches because they're relatively new, but we do have some projects upcoming. We're going to be deploying these. We've consulted with a couple of times with people who have been using them and didn't have any problems for their particular use case. Read through all the documentation, spend a little bit of time in the forums. If you have a more than basic use case, or you have some really in-depth layer three routing requirements that you're hoping to do, because as I said at the beginning, the layer three end, it's kind of rudimentary with Unify. It's more of a checks the box to make the marketing people happy, but doesn't give you some of the advanced control you're going to find on a really high-end enterprise switch but of course you're not paying the high-end enterprise switch price for a unify so uh, good and bad with it as always uh if you'd like to buy one you head over to unify directly we are not a reseller of unify and unify did not send me this i did buy it as i said in the beginning so there's no real bias other than i guess i'm biased because i like unify and we deploy a lot of it and uh, we've had great success with deploying everything from ap's and switches not the routers though. Routers are terrible. Don't buy a, don't buy anything from Unify as far as routers go. Uh, I just can't recommend it. They're better than I guess home user stuff, but I, I say that a lot, but people keep buying them and keep asking why they won't do the thing that they hope they would do. And yeah, anyways, I won't rant about that. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. 
For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store, where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.